George Washington was a Virginia gentleman and a great soldier who became the father of his country. George Washington, the first United States president, was born in Westmoreland County, Virginia, on February 22, 1732. He came from a prominent family. He had a very regal bearing. Washington's property holdings were extensive. He was homeschooled until the age of 16, when he left home to help map the boundaries of the English colony of Virginia. Then in 1752, his brother and his niece both died, and the 20-year-old Washington inherited his family's fortune, including their home in Mount Vernon, Virginia. George Washington was a slave owner, that he had hundreds of slaves. In 1753, when the French began seizing British territory in the American colonies, Washington, a major in the Virginia militia, was sent to defend the Crown's claims. Washington fought against the French and the Indians uh, in the 1750s when he was a British officer. He led several military campaigns, and after the British won the war, he sought an officer's commission in the British Army. He was turned down for a leadership position in the British military and was embittered by that. In 1758, Washington left the militia and returned to Mount Vernon. Within one month, he married wealthy widow Martha Custis. Martha, along with the property, made him one of the wealthiest leaders in Virginia and in the country. Washington was elected to Virginia's House of Burgesses. He began to oppose the growing tax burden Britain was imposing on the colonies. America felt that Britain, its mother country, was exploiting it for taxation and not giving it the freedom that it deserved to chart its own course. George Washington was not a Patrick Henry or a Sam Adams or a Thomas Paine, any of the fervent extremists, if you will, who were leading the revolution. He was a more reluctant convert. In March 1775, Washington was elected to the First Continental Congress. One month later, the Revolutionary War began. Washington was literally the man on horseback who rode back to the Second Continental Congress, ready to take charge of the Patriot Army. In March 1776, Washington's army won its first victory, beating the British in Boston. The British evacuated Boston, and Washington moved his army to New York City. But within months, Washington was forced to flee New York City. George Washington lost battle after battle but he never lost the war. He always lived to fight again another day. On Christmas night, 1776, Washington attacked the British. George Washington was a guerrilla leader. When he crossed over the Delaware River, he was using guerrilla tactics, stealth, to do it, and no one was expecting it to happen. Washington defeated the British in Princeton and Trenton, but following those victories was a long, harsh winter for the Continental Army. The Valley Forge was the low point that cold, bleak winter. They were walking barefoot in the snow. Washington's strategy was all about making it for another day. Washington won the last major conflict of the Revolutionary War in October 1781 with the surrender of the British fleet at Yorktown. In 1783, with the war over, Washington resigned and went home to Mount Vernon. Washington is pulled back into the political fray, back into Philadelphia in that hot summer of 1787, where they carve out the new constitution. And he agreed to become president to help unify this new nation. On April 30th, 1789, George Washington was sworn in as the first president of the United States. Washington was the only man unanimously elected under the Electoral College. Washington led the young nation from the Capitol in New York City serving two terms as president. Washington understood that for the democracy to be really a real democracy and for there to be popular rule and not rule by kings, he had to give up power. He had to set the example of the chief executive who voluntarily gives up power and goes home. On December 14, 1799, George Washington died. When he died, he freed his slaves. He emancipated them upon his death. So Washington was even in death, the unifying man.